Hey, hello, howdy, how you doing? How long do you typically set your days for in Project Zomboid? Do you keep it at an hour by default? Maybe you set it to two hours if you think you're special. Well, today I wanted to try something different, and if you're watching this video, it means you already saw the title and clicked the thumbnail, so you already know what it's about. If you're asking yourself who the fuck actually plays on this setting, I'd say probably psychopaths and mentally unstable people, and that's exactly why today, we're gonna set days to a whopping 15 minutes and see just how much we can accomplish. Quick disclaimer before we get started here, it's currently 3.09am, and I haven't slept in like two weeks on account of a little thing called acute bronchitis, so if this script feels just a little off-kilter, Mind your business. Meet Gail Lewis, former Walmart superstar turned lumberjack. She's thin-skinned, a slow healer, agoraphobic, prone to illness, a chain smoker, unlucky, has a weak stomach, and extreme anxiety, coupled with horrible eyesight and a first grade reading level. On the bright side, she can swing an axe pretty quickly, is good with her hands, doesn't need much sleep, learns fast, has the top-tier Walmart organization and athleticism, and an extreme distaste for pop music. I chose Rosewood as the starting location because I have no idea how horribly things are going to go, and if I'm going to spend a day doing this, well I might as well do it in a reasonable location. Anyway, I spawned in at the police station and immediately got to work looting the area for lighters, matches, and cigarettes before making my way over to the fire station. As luck would have it, there was a truck sitting in the parking lot with an axe in it that I was able to use to take out the zombies in the area, giving me a digital watch. Seeing that it was already noon, I tried to loot the fire station as quickly as possible. By the time I'd finished looting, it was already 3 o'clock. On the bright side, I found quite a few axes and some general tools like a hammer, a saw, and a screwdriver. Unfortunately, there's no keys to the truck though, so I can't take that one with me. But it's already 5pm, so I headed back to the police station to loot the armory before nightfall. Inside the armory, I found an AK-47, a Beretta, and a Mossberg shotgun, along with 7 boxes of 12 gauge shells and 5 boxes of 9mm ammo. The only downside? It's already 9pm. By the time I'd made it back to the fire station, it was already midnight. After sleeping for a few hours, I set off in the morning to loot some of the houses in a nearby neighborhood. The big issue so far has been that just the amount of Moodle management that goes on here. I'm either in a constant state of panic, hunger, or thirst, though the thirst issue seems to be resolved with copious amounts of water bottles. It takes around 4 hours to loot one house at this rate, so the goal quickly became find the important shit and get out. While looting the garages, I found a generator, which kind of just continues to reiterate what I always like to point out here. I don't think I've ever had a playthrough where I haven't been able to find a generator in these two garages in Rosewood. Outside of that, I also found a key to an absolute panty dropper hot rod, only to find out it was out of fuel. I do have two gas cans though, so I can make a run in the morning to go grab some more fuel from the gas station at the end of town. Carrying the generator back to the fire station took several hours, which brought day two to a close. Before continuing, I stopped to disable a few mods since they were annoying the shit out of me. The only one you should notice is the different crosshair, but for transparency's sake, that's really the only change for the remainder of the playthrough. I set out for the gas station at around 3am, and after 8 short hours of walking, made it to my location just before noon. Since I have no impulse control, I also went through and looted the store and the apartment above the store, finding a legendary Bix Scalibur, the holiest of weapons.
While walking back to the fire station, I was able to find a working vehicle, so I drove that back to refuel and finish looting the gas station. By the time I'd finished looting, it was already 6am the next day, which lined up perfectly with life and living. In normal one hour days, the show usually takes around 30 minutes to fully play through. Well, on 15 minute days, that's extended to around two and a half hours. I chose to sleep at the gas station, waking up at 4pm before heading back to the fire station for the day. The big challenge with 15 minute days so far is just the fact that it'll take almost an entire day to do something as simple as transferring loot into your base. On the bright side, you can absolutely burn through skill books like your Chris Drager. I've been recording for about an hour or so now and we're already on day 6. Even with the wakeful trait, this still feels like I'm speedrunning Zomboid. My plan for today was simple, go loot the school and search for a generator knowledge magazine along with a backpack. I was able to pull up to the school early the next morning and with the strength of 10 Gale Lewises, cleared the area before pushing inside. After finding a backpack and a locker, I made my way to the school library where I found a shit ton of magazines and skill books that I'm going to spend a few days reading. Don't ask why they have magazines about how to operate assault rifles, this is America after all. Where else would you expect to find all your firearm needs if not for a public school? Anyway, with the looting run out of the way, I blew through the rest of the day by reading all of those magazines and watching Life and Living. I think I'm going to try to give myself one month in game to see just how far I can progress compared to a normal run, considering I'll have a quarter of the time to do so. Since this is supposed to be the last day for Life and Living, I wanted to capitalize on it, so I sat my ass in front of the TV and started reading some skill books while absorbing any infomercials that popped up throughout the day. I got hit with a heli event that evening, but it didn't really do all that much and was gone before I even had a chance to investigate it. For some reason, life and living continued into day 8, so I just continued with reading skill books before finally shutting off at noon. Same thing again on day 9. The only bout of excitement I got was a helicopter crash that evening, but I was too tired to investigate, so I made plans to head out in the morning and check it out. I have no idea how this happened because I'm still in the same cell, so Unseen Hours should have prevented this, but a zombie spawned in the storage closet down in the garage. You know, it'd be nice if basic settings in this game could just work as intended for once, but whatever. At least I got some cool gear out of it. While I was leaving the station, I noticed some scrap wreckage out front indicating that the crash should be nearby, so I set out on foot to try to find it. Unfortunately, I have the attention span of a goldfish and was easily distracted by a nomad zombie that took up the bulk of my day to loot. To be honest, the rest of the day was spent wandering through the city trying to pick up audio cues as to where the crash could be. By that evening, I'd come to the conclusion that it must be near the fire station since that's where all the queues are the loudest and there's a bunch of shit all over the floor. But I'm constantly dying of hunger or thirst, so we'll have to continue searching tomorrow. I found some more wreckage near the police station, so I continued heading southwest to hunt for the downed bird. I spent a solid two minutes running around the area without much luck before realizing that it had already been about eight hours in game, meaning I just effectively wasted another day. I wanted at least some sort of moral victory today, so I just spam shouted in the streets until I'd killed about a dozen or so zombies, after which I shredded all of their clothes for some tailoring XP.
By the next morning, I'd accumulated about 160 ripped sheets and 35 leather strips to use, so I headed back to the fire station to drop everything off, before proceeding to spend the rest of the day turning those materials into two tailoring levels for reading the Volume 2 skillbook. I swear it's been either raining or foggy every single day of this playthrough. It's ridiculous. Anyway, by the time I actually woke up and got ready for the day, it was already 4pm, so I decided to just hit up the neighborhood to see if I could find any blow torches or welder masks in the garage. After checking about 4 garages in 6 hours, I managed to find another generator and a propane torch in the last garage of the night. I can throw this one over at the gas station for when the power goes out. I have a propane torch and some Hank Hill certified propane, but I still need a welder's mask, so I made up my mind to head over to the mechanic shop to see if I could get lucky there. Unfortunately, I didn't have much luck, so it looks like it's just back to house hopping until I find one. In classic Gale Lewis fashion, I tripped an alarm on the first house I entered, pulling in a sea of angry customers. Normally, I'd just dip out and go to another building, but I need more rip sheets for tailoring, and if I don't kill these guys now, well, they're just gonna be here tomorrow when I come back. After a couple hours of fighting, it was pretty clear that this wasn't a winnable situation. There were simply too many zombies and it was already nighttime. Considering I only have one level in my nimble skill, trying to fight a horde like this with just an axe is essentially a death sentence, so I cut my losses and headed home for the night to continue the next morning. There were a few more zombies waiting for me in the parking lot when I got home, so I took care of them before turning in for the night. Well, we're on like the 10th f***ing thunderstorm, and it's too gross out to do anything, so this was just another day spent sitting on the floor reading. Glad to see we finally got Toto to stop blessing the rains for a day. Anyway, I've been slacking on long-term survivability, so today the big goal is to hit up the Gigamart nearby and loot it for some canned goods. I need to find some seeds for a garden as well, so if I do have time, I want to go hit up some of the farms in the southwest. That being said, I have a strong suspicion that driving from the grocery store to the farms is going to take up the bulk of the day anyway. Luckily, being the last survivor on Earth has its advantages, as we have the entire grocery store at our disposal, which should give us more than enough food to last a few months without needing to place any traps or make massive cabbage farms. By that afternoon, I had more than enough to get me through the rest of the playthrough, and changed focus to the farms in the south. It took about 4 hours, but I made it. Now to clear out the zombies and get to work looting. Or get shot at by some lunatic with a pilot's license.
After Alec Baldwin's PR team convinced him to go home, I pushed out of the shed and spent a couple hours clearing out the immediate area. This continued through the night with me bouncing from shed to shed, searching for seeds unsuccessfully. By 5am on day 17, I was fully out of vitamins, so I found a house to rest at for a bit. After taking out another shed, I've now committed almost an entire 24 hours to seed hunting, and it's getting incredibly boring, so I decided to just head home empty handed, considering it'll take most of the day for me to drive back. Not to mention all the zombies I'm going to need to take care of due to respawn rates. Alright, we're 18 days in at this point, and if I can be honest, this got stale back on day 10. There's just not enough time in the day to get anything done, even with the wakeful trait. You basically have to choose one hyper-specific thing to do that day, and if you're lucky, you might be able to accomplish that task. It's just not an enjoyable way to play, in my opinion. That being said, I think the most difficult aspect of 15 minute days is really the concept of not being able to effectively level your agility skills. Take the nimble skill, for example. Like I said, we're 18 days in, and I have a whopping 41.6 XP in that skill. And that's with a 75% XP boost from the Gymnast trait. With that, I wanted to do one final hoorah with Gail Lewis, Walmart superstar. So today, I loaded up the car with all the guns and ammo I found on day one, and set off for the prison to see just how long I could hold out. If you really want to feel my pain, it took me 5 hours in game to put 5 shells in a shotgun and load 3 magazines for my pistol. I made it to the prison at around 2.30 that afternoon and prepared for my final stand. Exhausted and hungry, Gail Lewis retreated back into the armory, slowly losing ground before locking herself on the rooftop. With one last effort, she reached for her radio and charmed us with her signature send-off one last time. Thank you all so much for watching. This was certainly a challenge of all time. Let me know if there's any other silly challenges like this that you'd like to see me try out, and I'll see what I can do. I know this one was a bit on the shorter end, but I promise I've got at least two absolutely massive multi-hour videos in the works that should be coming out within the next few weeks here. With that being said though, I'm gonna get out of here. I appreciate you all, stay safe, and thanks for stopping by.